Well, there's a lot more where that came from. So what you saw last week was the tone paper, and I love tone paper. I do use it sometimes. I just don't use it on the channel, and I don't really use it to make finished pieces. I have a little sketchbook that I walk around with, but that's really it. So I decided to put it in the next, the last video, and show you some of that. But this is something you've never seen before. So when I first got back into art, I went through the pencil sketching, and then I did some ink, and then I did a little bit of watercolor. And then I got back into colored pencils. Now when I say get back into, I mean that very loosely. I probably have not used colored pencils since I was a kid, but I decided I'm gonna use, I've seen some colored pencil artists, so I was like, wow, that's colored pencil, that's beautiful, it's amazing. So I said I'm gonna pick up some colored pencil, and I did start drawing a little bit with colored pencil and, and messing around with it. The thing is, Sometimes it's difficult to work around if you go to, to the dark stuff and you're like, oh wait I was supposed to put something light on top of that kind of similar to watercolor You can't do it. You usually you can't put something very light on top you, Sometimes you can if it depends on how it is, but most of the time you can't so it's like oh There's got to be a solution for this. So someone introduced me to sanded paper now the sanded paper that I was first introduced to was the color fix or the art fix I don't know how that works but anyway it's it's comes in different colors it comes in there it does come in white there's white there um, but it comes in a lot of different colors and let me show you some of my favorite it comes in like a gray and this like juniper colored paper I think they call it Augberry burn I don't know what they call it it doesn't matter the point is I made a book for it I punched my own book and created one just for the sanded paper and then I never used it. I just, I put it together. I was using some bigger pieces, some, some bigger pieces that I used way back when I first started using it. And then I put it there probably around 2018 or 2017 or 16 maybe. I used it and then I stopped. I made the book, I stopped using it. That's it, done. So I wanted to do something with this. And one of the greatest things that I use it for is colored pencil. Why? because you can take dark colors and put them down first and then you blend it out with the odorless mineral spirits and then you put, you don't have to do that. That's just what I'm gonna do in this video. But you can blend out on this. Now you have to be careful. Some of the sanded paper does not take to any kind of solvents or anything. Sometimes you put watercolor on a sanded paper and it falls apart. It's like water soluble sand or I don't know what the heck that is. But it just falls apart. Sometimes the solvent breaks it apart too, not the color fix paper. That stuff holds up to anything. It's just that it's it's very coarse. So it's not like a uh, fine sandpaper. Now I'm not gonna use this in this video, but this is some of the UART, the, the 600 grade, you can get 800 grade or 400 grade. And this is just basically sandpaper, that's all this is. It just, and it's separated by glassine sheet, so that's nice too. But this is just sandpaper, so you can hear it. This stuff is much coarser, and you can feel it. You can feel it a lot more. It's got a lot more, like, bigger particles and smaller particles at the same time. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this. I'm going to use some colored pencil, use some solvent, and show you how you can put the light stuff on top of the dark stuff. I'm also going to tell you why sometimes I don't even think to pick this up, and why probably I haven't picked it up in years but I am gonna give you some pluses for this as well. So if you're a colored pencil person, the, the paper is great. Sanded paper, it doesn't matter which one you get. Sanded paper is great if you're going to use colored pencils. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so I figured I'm gonna start with the cons first. And the number one thing that I wanna mention about the sanded paper is that it takes a very long time, which is why I only did something very small here. This is very small compared to something that I normally do. This is a pretty small piece of paper, and I only put a couple of different shapes on it and go through that with you, and you'll see why I do that. But it took this took me as long, if not longer, than if I filled the entire page with watercolor and then waited for it to dry and then went back in with ink and put a lot of detail in it. This took longer than that would have taken. And that's one of the cons with colored pencils. They just take a very long time. You gotta build up layers. Even with this, I can't, 
when you compare this to even putting on regular paper where you don't have any kind of sanded surface, it takes even longer than this. So it takes people a long time with colored pencils to do this. Next one is that it's sandpaper. You're going to use up those pencils like crazy. You will see how much dust I use. And you'll also see that I, I take the page away and then I kind of brush it off. I have this mop brush that I brush all the dust into the garbage. Because you don't want to blow it off. You have to do it very gently into the garbage so that it falls into the trash. You do not want this stuff. You're basically, it's pigment. All colored pencils are is a pigment in a binder. So when you make all this dust, you have this actual pigment that's in that binder that turns into dust. It's turning it into very fine particles. If you blow out into the middle of the room, you've blown those particles into the air. You're going to breathe them in. It's really not good for you. So, and I've, I've have heard people tell me that they've uh, had some problems with pastel pencils, which are, make even more of a mess. Then they because they use too much and then they just blow it off, blow it off, and eventually they have some breathing problems years and years later. But anyway, it, it doesn't matter. The point is, you shouldn't breathe in the pigment dust. As a matter of fact, if you go to a plastics company, which I've been to, where they put they use clear plastic and they put the pigment into the plastic, all those people have respirators. It's done in a special room. And all those people have respirators on. They have uh, air cleaners that run constantly because that stuff is very dangerous to get into the air. Now, I've mentioned you want to make sure that you get a paper that's not like water soluble or will dissolve with solvents. Sometimes that happens. This paper doesn't do that. But some of the other papers do. And I've had, I don't remember what brand it was that I used. I have had it fall apart on me. And that's terrible. You don't want it to fall apart on you like that because it's just. It's ridiculous. You're doing something, you go to put something on there and all the stuff comes off. It's stupid. Now in this video, I'm using odorless mineral spirits. It also can be a hazard. Uh, it's odorless, which means that a lot, of, a lot of people have a lot less problems with it because of the odor. I cannot use, if I use something like turpentine or something like that, even rubbing alcohol or something, that destroys my sinuses. I cannot use that at all. But the odorless mineral spirits, just because it's odorless, doesn't mean that there's not fumes going up into the air. So you'll see me continuously through this whole thing, take the cap off and put the cap back on, and take the cap off and put the cap back on, because I don't want to just sit there breathing the stuff in. I put the brush off way to the side while I'm not using it after I've wiped it off really good. I mean, the stuff dissolves pretty quickly, but it, it does dissolve into the air. But that's the point, is dissolving into the air that you're breathing. So you want to just be careful with it. Some people, it, they're bothered by it. Some people use Gamsol or something like that. It's still a mineral spirit. It's still basically the same thing. It, it can hurt you. You don't want to inhale the stuff. So you want to keep it away from you and use it very sparingly and then put it away, which is why I do a section at a time and then use it and put it away. I don't want to sit there with the container open and have to go over the entire piece. You don't want to do that in just a little bit at a time and then cap it back off and, and you're done. Now, the other thing with this particular paper is that you have to sit there and really scrub into those nooks and crannies because it's great paper. I love it, but it will also cause a lot of gaps as you're running across it and you have to constantly either sharpen your pencil constantly or, and you'll see, I, I think it was the, the red, the bright red that's over on the bottom right later. Um, I had to sharpen that pencil because I was scrubbing away at it and made a big area of red and it just didn't fill in right. I had to go sharpen it and scribble it all in again and try and do it again. It just sometimes it does not fill in very well. Now the finer paper, that UART paper that you saw me look at before, that stuff fills in much easier and that's not a big deal. Now if you had, and also if this was like a pastel pencil, you'd be able to push that into the nooks and crannies. You don't have to fill all the gaps because later you're going to go back in with either uh, a stylus or something like that, a rubber stylus or, or a brush or something and kind of push that into the nooks and get all that dust in there. But still, again, that's another problem. That's for another video. Now you're going to say to me, why would I even bring this up? Why would I say that I like this paper? I've just listed so many reasons to throw this book in the trash. Why would I say that I actually like this? 
let me tell you why I actually like it. Now I'm using colored pencils. Let me, you know what? Let me talk about that first. Before, let me go into the pros of colored pencils because I do love colored pencils. The ones that I use here are the Derwent drawing pencils. They are my favorite colored pencils to ever use. I love the muted palette that they give. It's like a earthy muted woodland palette and I love it. And the white pencil from this set is the best white pencil I've ever used. I know some people say the luminous white pencil is really good. I've never used that and I really don't need to because this one is amazing. I love it. And and I don't even think I used it in the, I don't think I did use it in this one, did I? I may have used it in one little section, but that first part, that's actually a very, very light blue, that first section that I did. It's not white. It looks white, but it's just like a very, very light powder blue. Anyway, I used that, and then I used some polychromos in there. That bright red patch is the polychromos. There's a couple more, but the I think the orange off the back of the the other side of, of one of the shapes is, uh, is the polychromos. And... I love those pencils too. They work very well together with these pencils. They both work amazingly well. I wish I would have done this on white paper, the white sanded paper, because you can see at the end when I get to that orange and I just, I'm going over it with the odorless mineral spirits and I accidentally wipe it onto some of the white of the page, how bright and brilliant that is. It dissolves the, the all of the uh, wax and binder and just turns it into a beautiful pigment, almost like a paint. You can almost make it paint-like when you do that. Now let's talk about now some of the cons as well was that on that colored pencil is that it takes so long, but I already covered that. So now we're going to go into the, the positives of this paper. Why would I recommend using sanded paper with all those cons that I just gave you and everything is just terrible all the time? It's not, I promise. Number one, it lets you do the layering. If you see everything I did here was I put down light stuff and then put down dark stuff and then put down light on top of it or just put down dark stuff and put down light on top of it. You can go back and forth and tune it however you want to tune it with this sanded paper because you're ne the sand doesn't go away. So once you brush it off and you uh, use the odorless mineral spirits and flatten it out, the the grit is still there so you can just go right back on top of it within you can do a hundred layers i'm sure don't quote me on that but i'm sure you could because every time you just layer and then you use the odorless mineral spirits and, and layer again and use more odorless mineral or you can use water soluble pencils on this like the derwent ink tents you can use that on this then you don't have to worry about the odorless mineral spirits you don't have to worry about um well you still have to worry about the dust but you're going to put a little bit of water on it instead of the odorless mineral spirits, and that's going to flatten it out. And I've done that many times before as well. I love doing that as well. But that this video was not about those. It was about the colored pencil. Now, in that topic, another plus is that you can... you Well, you don't have to layer as much. You can layer a lot less because it, so much pigment comes off on that page when you run over it with the with the you run over the sanded paper with the pencil that you really don't have to layer very much i did a few layers on some parts i think some parts i only did one layer and i didn't even blend it out on some little areas but but other areas i did most of the areas i blended it out and then i went back in and put some more color on it but you don't have to you can not you can skip that part and just put down the color if you really want to and it happens very quickly. You can build up a layers very quickly because it's ripping that color out of the pencil for you. So instead of doing a hundred layers, you may do two or three layers and you get just as thick as if you would do maybe a dozen layers or so. It's just, it's, it works very well that way. So it does act a little bit quicker than if you're using regular paper which again, I've already mentioned. One of the other things, I know with colored pencil, you have to be very careful of the col the, the direction the, the, and the pattern that you're using when you put lay it down. If you use the strokes back, you'll see me, I'm very sloppy with my stroke here. This is like I'm coloring in like a coloring book with a crayon. I'm just, just every different direction. It's not smooth. It's not little circles or little short lines that are all going the same direction. I'm going every which direction. And in the end, it still looks smooth because once that pigment is sitting on that the surface of that paper, 
you put down that odorless mineral spirit, it just melts it right into those grooves and you don't have to worry about any of those lines. So that's, that's another positive with using the color pencil on this paper. This particular paper, another positive of it, is that it's sealed. The color that you actually see on there is acrylic paint on top of, or either they mix the sand with the acrylic paint and put it on, or they put all that stuff on and then put acrylic paint over it. But I think it's mixed into the acrylic paint. So it's acrylic paint, basically, uh, with sand in it. And I, I don't know if it's exactly acrylic paint. I think that's what they said at one point, but uh, that's what I read anyway. But anyway, it, it's so you can paint under the, the colored pencil if you want to. You can use watercolor on it, and I have used watercolor on this. I've used water-soluble pencils as well. They work absolutely wonderful on this. So you can put that on top of this and then go over it with colored pencil, and it, it just saves you a lot of time because you can put your base layer of colors down. So all in all, I really do enjoy these products. The, the thing is, most of the art that I do, I love watercolor. So I do most of my art is watercolor and ink. That's most of my art. And because of that, and, and because I like to get things done quickly, if I was gonna work on a piece and just put it aside and just work on it when I could, I love to do colored pencil. And I like to do it on the sanded paper, but it, it just, it takes so much time to complete a piece that I usually don't go that route. I, I have very little patience when it comes to art. I don't have a ton of time to create art. So when I do create art, I want to feel like I'm accomplishing something. And it helps me. I know there's a lot of people that say, oh, these people don't have any time for art anymore. They don't put the effort in. They don't put the time into a single piece and make it look nice. That's not what I'm going for. I'm looking to create something while it's in my head, get it out on paper so I can stop thinking about it, and then move on to the next thing. Either something that I take from that piece I just did, or a completely new idea with a different medium. That's how I work. And sometimes I will get bored if I just work on the same piece for a very, very long time. I can't, more than a couple days, more than a couple different sessions and I'm losing my mind. I know that that's a character flaw, so what? I'm willing to live with it. I have so many other things in my life that, I have, that are, are more important than trying to train myself to work on a single piece for 10 days or a month or something. I don't want to do that. It's definitely something that I am not into. So I like to have something where I can paint it, get it done, put in some detail, and it's finished. I have a couple of sessions into it maybe, uh, one, two, or three sessions into it, and I'm done. So for all of these reasons, that is why I both love and don't use these particular products. I absolutely do love them. This piece, when I did it, was so gratifying. I enjoyed it so much. But you look how small this is, and it took hours of working at it to get it done. And most people look at that and say, there's no way that took you hours and hours. No, it did, because I, I suck at what I do. But that doesn't matter. I just don't do it very often. But still, it just takes a long time to go back and I'm one of those people that I like to fine tune everything. So if I can go back and forth a hundred times, I will. So I try not to do that. And that is all the great advice that I received from these people popping up on your screen now. They told me all about how to do this and, and they're the ones responsible for it. Don't quote me on that. So thumb up the video if you are going to try colored pencil on sanded paper or anything on sanded paper. And I will say, if you want to save yourself some time, do the watercolor or paint, acrylic paint, or whatever you want on, on the first layer, and then just tune it with the colored pencils and see how that has, see how you like that, see how that works out for you. I like the toned uh, paper on the sanded paper. You may not like that. You may like just the white. And they have the white, and it works just wonderfully, and it's a bright white because it's mixed with the acrylic white paint. So... It's a bright white. It's not like a cream colored or anything like that. Of course, you can get it in that color if you want to. All right. If you would like to join our community, go to illustrationsbypete.com. You can come in. You can put your own artwork on the site and promote it. You can find some inspiration in the free reference photos. You can just use them however you want in your artwork. You do not need to credit me. 
Or you can come into the forums and talk to some people and maybe give some advice and maybe find a little bit of information that helps you. So come check us out. All right, that's about it for me. I'm going to go. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.